Hey everyone, my name is Adam Keller and I'm a developer advocate here at AWS on the Container Services team. Today we are announcing uh, AWS AppRunner VPC support. This is one of our most highly requested features for customers that are using AWS AppRunner or that want to use AWS AppRunner. And as you can see here on our product roadmap, uh, there's been quite a bit of, uh, of uh, talking, thumbs ups, really supporting this feature launch. So what I wanna do today is quickly dive into the feature, show you how it works, and then get started and, and get out there and start deploying some workloads to AppRunner. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by just uh, go walking through my environment, what I have built and how AppRunner is going to integrate with a service that I have running inside of a VPC. And specifically, it's actually a database cluster. So I have a VPC that I've created which is uh, this one right here. So this is my app runner demo VPC. We can see here's my VPC ID. Now, I currently have um, a, an Aurora uh, database cluster running and it's running inside private subnets in my VPC, my virtual private cloud. And the goal here is I want to be able to connect my publicly facing app runner web service, API service to my private VPC uh, RDS database cluster. So in order to do that, we have to use this new feature, which we just announced. So uh, just to show you here, I have, you know, to, to show that how the, the, how this works now outside of app runner uh, is I'd have to build something, some sort of, you know, if I want to run a container service using ECS or EC2, whatever that is, Lambda, uh, I'd have to build it in the VPC, deploy all of that, manage all those resources. So I have an ECS cluster running right now, actually. And I can actually show you that in that ECS cluster, if I go to the DNS name, you can see here's my service. So all my service does is it's a container that every time you hit the web endpoint, it just simply checks it that it can communicate on port 5432, which is Postgres, to the back end uh, database, which is in a private subnet. So here is my ECS service that's running. But I don't need ECS for this use case. My my use case is a, is an API service that's publicly facing, uh, but I just need to talk to my private service. So let's get started and actually look into how the feature works. So I'm in the App Runner console. One thing you may notice here is this new VPC connectors functionality. So I'm actually just going to delete this so I can create it from scratch. But what you can do is create a VPC connector which behind the scenes, AppRunner is going to do a few things and, and some magic to connect uh, your AppRunner service that's running into your VPC uh, to talk to whatever services you allow over the security group that you're gonna add to that configuration. So let's get right into it. And I'm gonna start by going through the create service wizard. So the beauty of AppRunner is it's a, it's a simple, easy to navigate service. I can start with a source code repository. I don't even have to have a container image or I can just pull a, a container image and, and use that to deploy my AppRunner service. In this case today, I do have a public image uh, called Netcat here. So that gives you a hint at what I'm doing behind the scenes to actually communicate with the database. It's nothing fancy. And so what we're going to do is pass in our container image URI. So again, this is hosted in public ECR, the ECR public gallery. Um, and this is that same image that's running uh, on Amazon ECS in the private subnet that's able to communicate within the VPC to my services uh, or to my database. So we're going to click next and we're going to name the service app runner VPC video demo. I'm going to keep all of the, uh, uh, configuration is the same with the exception of one thing. Uh, my service does require that uh, I, I pass an environment variable which contains the uh, database name, the database URI, and the port that we want to talk on. So the first is target, and the target's going to be, we're going to go to RDS, and we're going to pick this endpoint, which is the writer instance. I could do the reader instance too. So that's my target value. And then I just need to set target port, which again, my code looks at these environment variables to determine how it's going to talk to the backend database. And the target port, which is 5432. My app listens on port 8080. That's all I'm gonna configure. Now, when it comes to the networking side, this is where you can determine for your service, 
if it needs to talk to resources within your VPC, this is where we're going to configure the custom VPC connector. So it gives me an option to choose a connector. I'm going to create it here and we're just going to name it app runner video demo. We're going to choose a VPC, which is that DD3 VPC. We can go back just to confirm. Yep, this is my app runner demo VPC. And now we're going to want to choose our subnets. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to connect my app runner service to my private subnets. So I'm going to go back to my VPC wizard and I'm going to go to the subnets here and I'm just going to search for private. Split these out. You can see these are my private subnets. So I want to add these. F1, UVA. Okay, so we have F1, UVA. I believe this was the other one. So these are my private subnets. So I choose my subnets, and now I'm going to choose a security group or security groups. So the point here being that we always want to, you know, think about um, when we connect services, when we're talking to uh, other resources and environments, we want to think least privileged. So I'm not going to just have a security group that's wide open to the world. Uh, to everything in my uh, VPC. And so what I've done is I've created a VPC that you can actually connect to um, uh, a security group that will connect directly to the database. So that's this security group right here. And I'm going to keep it at that. And all it does is it basically this security group says any resource that has this security group attached can speak to any other resource that has this security group attached on port 5432. So we're going to leave it at that. We're not going to do anything else. I'm going to click add. And that's it. So now this has created that uh, that VPC connector for me uh, all on the back end. And all I had to do was just check a couple boxes and I'm ready to go. So let's hit next. And then let's go all the way down to create and deploy. Now, this does take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is while this is happening, we're going to take a brief pause and we're going to do some little fast forward magic. And when we come back, we'll take a look at our service and we'll see how things look. We'll be right back. Okay, so. I'm back, and as you can see, in the course of about three minutes, uh, App Runner for the first time deployment of this service um, was able to pull the image from ECR. It health checked. It, it built all the resources behind the scenes, and had a successful health check, and has officially deployed our application. So now is the moment of truth where we can go to our app. We're going to go to the URL um, that has been provided to us from App Runner, and what we should see is that. We're, have we have a successful connection to that host on that port. So let's try it out. And there you go. So let's zoom in. And there you have it. So in the span of about seven or eight minutes, I went from here's an idea, here's a service, here's a container image I have, to having that image running on AWS App Runner with me managing zero resources. This is a fully managed service. And that means auto scaling is managed. Um, I have metrics monitoring logging all available to me within the app runner service. I didn't have to configure anything. And most importantly, we had resources in a private VPC that my service can now connect to and communicate with. So this, uh, I expect this is going to enable a lot of new use cases for AWS app runner. So a couple things. One, reach out if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to chat about with App Runner. Um, two, uh, if there's anything that any other features you want to see, uh, reach out to us on our public roadmap. So the roadmap's a great place to voice your uh, you know support issues, uh, features that you're looking for in our in our container services. And last but not least, we will be doing a show on this. So the show will be on containers from the couch. We're going to do a live stream. It's going to be Justin Garrison and myself. We're going to deep dive into the service. We're going to talk a little bit about the internals and how the communication aspect works, how the VPC connector works, a little bit about the VPC hyperplane um, and all the cool stuff that goes into it. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Happy deploying. Have some fun. 
Uh, one other thing I want to mention before I leave. This, uh, the AWS Copilot CLI supports this feature on day one. So this feature is ready to go out of the box. Um, also CloudFormation, AWS SDKs, as well as the AWS console, as you saw here. So thanks so much and uh, have some fun today.